My name is Paul Marsh. I'm a design manager working for Kia Construction Northern. I studied uh, BSc Architectural Technology and um, graduated in 2010. My name is Gail. I graduated in 2013 and I studied Architectural Technology part-time for five years at UCLan. My name's uh, Jody Chapman. I did Architectural Technology in graduated in 2012 and I'm working as an Architectural Technologist at Fulton & Browns in Newcastle. Hi, my name's Mike Hartley and I studied Architectural Technology here as well. It's been really interesting coming back into uni. Um, one thing I mentioned in the presentation this morning was that there was no one necessarily doing this when I was in uni and how I would have really found it beneficial for someone to come in and give me a talk about what they'd done, the experiences they'd had uh, post-graduation. Uh, and then just sort of in between, I thought there was a, a £1 million uh, dementia care centre. One of the main advantages of the course I found was its flexibility. I did the course two years full time, one year out in industry and then returned back for two years part time and that was keeping the job that I had in the year out. Now that was a really massive positive um, point to make about the course uh, in the fact that I came back to my final year having that industry knowledge. It was invaluable to my final year course. They wouldn't have done as well as it did without having that experience. So flexibility is a massive, massive uh, plus point for the course. Um, no matter what stage you're studying at, um, year one, two or three, experience in an architectural practice is like crucial. It's beneficial because you're going to be against so many other graduates and to have that on your CV, it just shows your proactiveness and you're willing to learn. While you're at university, just learn everything about as many softwares that are offered to you because you can take them in this, in, into industry and then go down one route or another, but just learn as much about AutoCAD, Revit, Zephyr is a new one that's coming up. Just try and learn everything about everything while you're at university because it'll really help in industry. The confidence that you're going to develop around construction projects, your ability to design, to manage, to, to communicate, that's paramount in, in all aspects of work. A lot of my job now is sitting a chair in meetings and that is all about having you know, 12 people around the table, all of which a lot of the time are more experienced than you, um, have been in the industry a lot longer than you. However, you are there chairing that meeting. So you've got to be able to, to really communicate with these guys and put across exactly, uh, you know, clearly uh, communicate exactly the story you're trying to tell and the programme you're trying to deliver. Design itself is a, a broad spectrum, but AT can lead to so many career opportunities. Um, as you've seen today on the panel, there's people who are um, Revit, um, working on that BIM construction, there's people who are still on like CAD, hand drawn, all these skills are so transferable and still relevant today. You find yourself in meetings quite a lot with like clients and contractors and stuff where you're trying to explain the detail and the only way you can explain that is by getting a piece of paper out and drawing it and you, you, might, you might find yourself on site having to, you know, with a load of people standing there, a piece of plasterboard in front of you or something that you're drawing on like upside down. You know, so that it's, it's the right way for them to understand it. With regards to new technologies, the industry is very much in transition at the moment. What you're finding is everyone is realising the benefits of uh, BIM, building information modelling, uh, and how the additional coordination, the team integration, the cost benefits, the quality benefits, the programme benefits, everyone's really grasping that. So the industry is very much moving towards a, a BIM uh, a BIM world, so to speak. Going into industry and maybe knowing more about Revit kind of gives you an advantage because it sets you ahead and people are going to come to you for information. So it'll make you shine from other people that maybe have went into industry a couple of years before you. If you can teach people who've been in industry 10, 15, 20 years something, they're going to remember you. So it is an advantage. A lot of experienced architectural technologists don't have the BIM knowledge and the BIM skills that some of these graduates do. So these graduates, have, they've almost um, hit the, let's say, sort of hit the ground running in the fact that they've found a bit of a niche market in that some of them are actually teaching the older experienced technologists how to use these programs. And that's really, it's really important. It's a really good selling point. Revit's not my strong point, <laughs> not by any I will have to catch up one day. I'm digging my heels in as long as possible until I have to. Um, but certainly, I mean, if, if you got a, a 21 year old student fresh out of university who came in who knew more about Revit than I did, then I would be open to learning from them just because you, you work with photos whilst I can help teach with certain elements and, and work with and impart my knowledge on people. It's, it's got to work both ways, really. I remember it being a really fun course and just learning 
while you're having fun. The lecturers are really kind of impersonal, but they're still strict, so it does help. And I just remember them teaching me even the small stuff. I, I mentioned it earlier about like line weights and stuff like that. You do need to remember it, and that if you need to take something with them to be able to learn something, so make sure you always have information to take to the lecturers to get something back. Just always keep working and always get crit. That's what I remember that from my experience at university. One of the key aspects I've found in my job is that if you're asked to deliver a certain task to detail a certain part of a building, you can sit there and look at it. And if you're not sure what you're doing, if you can ask someone with a blank piece of paper, their first response to you will be, well, have you had a go? You know, have, have you done your research? Have you tried? And your answer needs to be yes. You, you need to be approaching people with details. That, it's nothing worse than going with a blank piece of paper and not having had a go. So one of the things we, we covered it earlier, and something that's really for the, you know, for the students to understand is they've got to put something in front of someone. And it comes down to the seminars and the studio um, studio sessions they have at the moment. They need to bring the work because without having anything down on paper, there's nothing for you to comment on. So I think that's a really key point for them. I graduated and I went straight into architectural technology, but I know people who I've worked in that have went straight to doing, working for slab, People who do the slabs and the concrete work, being the, the CAD technician for that, or people who went into master planning for shopping centres and are doing something like that. You can, you literally don't have to look straight away for architectural technology jobs. You can go into being a design manager if you wanted to, or working for a structural engineering company as a CAD technician. All the information that you're gonna get from all these different companies is gonna help you in the long run. All of the knowledge is here for the taking. All they have to do is take it. It's It really is that simple. And I can't emphasise enough how fantastic of this Anne and Ben and Matt are. They're just, you know, genuinely fantastic people to work with. You do an architectural technology course. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be an architectural technologist for the rest of your career. One of the, the key aspects to remember is transferable skills. I've certainly found in my career that I started with a, a base of knowledge that I'd learnt from the course. And I've developed this through the years and progressed in my career to the point where I've been able to move from being an architectural technologist to a design manager and I've been able to transfer that, that core that core skills I've developed and apply them to my new role. And it's certainly the course, the arch architectural technology course, that really gave that confidence and that, that sort of base, um, base knowledge to uh, progress in the industry.